in this video we're going to talk about uh, how to use extensions but more in terms of the best practices for creating virtuos extensions. Now before we get into that please don't forget to hit the subscribe button below if you like these videos we publish regular content to these YouTube channels so you can keep updated. So firstly uh, extensions what are they? So if you recall extensions are basically where you can use JavaScript to create your own custom natural language that you can then use in a test. Now that's fantastic because it makes Virtuoso extendable, and very low code, but the trouble is taking this extension here, for example, I don't really know what that does unless I wrote it or I can read the JavaScript or I just take a guess. It doesn't really tell me what it's doing. So actually what we're gonna talk about today is not really how to create extensions so much, but some best practices for making sure that they're very reusable across all the testers in your team. So what I've got over here is I've got a journey where I'm filling in a form. And I've already written the natural language steps using our standard natural language syntax to go and fill in the form. And now I wanna create a password, but I want that password to be different each time the test runs. So we don't have a command, a natural language command to create a password. So actually what you can do here, I could come to the extensions and I could certainly create an extension called, uh, I don't know, random password. And I would always recommend, first of all here for best practices, give it a name that kind of starts to tell you what it does. So this generates a random password. So now I could go and write JavaScript in here, but if I don't know JavaScript, of course, a lot of people use our AI bot to be able to say, generate a random password with eight characters, with one uppercase, one lowercase, uh, one number, and one special character. So we can use the AI here to go and basically create the JavaScript for me. So I'm gonna do that just using a plain English hint. So it's gone ahead and I can now add that into my extension. Now, firstly here, that you always need to make sure that when you have the JavaScript, when you have it creates a function, you are gonna to have to add one line, which is to take the function name and say that you want the extension to return the output of that function. So you gotta add that in. Now, while we do add in uh, some text here, as you see, what I would probably do is I would go and customize this. And I would do this with comments to say, firstly, this extension uh, creates a random password, uh, eight characters long, with one uppercase, one lowercase, um, one number, and one special character. Then I might put another line. I might say that while we capture the timeline, you could say created by James B on the 19th of Feb, for example. And then what I'll do is I'll put some instructions for using it. Because of course, while it's great you can have your natural language, if someone doesn't know how to implement that in a test, they can't really use it. So this is a simple one. You would just write a step, which would be random password brackets, if there were gonna be inputs, which there aren't, but you still put them. And now you're gonna return password. So literally someone could copy that step and they could go and drop it into their test. So basically a bit of detail about what it's for, some instructions, and then I could save that. Then what I also might want to do, since we can put a short description here, I could say just this extension creates a random password, edit the description and put that in and save it. And it just means that when people go down the list, they can see the name, they can see what it does. If they open it, they've then got a description, who created it, and some basic instructions of how to use that. So with that done now, I can literally take my step here. I could copy that and I could literally then drop that in. So let's put a new step, which then adds that in and you'll see when it runs, it goes and does exactly what I want. Now, because this is a password, it's recognized it's gonna redact it. But what I could do then is just say, write password, which is the output of the extension in password. And then I could do write password in confirm password. So in this way, you can see I created a natural language extension using the AI bot. I gave it a sort of a quite you know, readable name. I put in a description and some instructions. 
So anybody now should easily be able to come in and use that. But in addition, you'll see that as part of our extensions, just be aware that you can see in the timeline, it also does show you, you know, I created this, it shows where it's used. So it gives you an idea of if it's used in different places. And so the only other consideration of best practices then is that if you're going to make a change to this and you can see it's already used in tests, then you probably want to clone this and you might clone it to your project and then you go ahead and probably rename it and start working on your cloned one. And then I could say, for instance, this was done by Andy D. And then I can go ahead and start changing this uh, depending on how I want that. So just a few best practices in terms of how to create, put some instructions, some details, who created, as well as an example of how to use the extension so that anybody can really know this, even though, of course, it's using JavaScript under the hood to drive that particular extension.